I'm ready. She's ready. So, the talk we're doing today is called A Recipe for Disaster, and it's subtitled with Read Your Labels. And it's not always as obvious as this picture. So, if this person was preparing a meal for you, you probably wouldn't eat it, right? Yeah, I don't think I would eat it either. So, there's a lot of deception out there with regards to labeling, food labels, what's really in your food, how is it produced, and we're going to try and sort of chop through some of this stuff here. So, we're going to cover a variety of things. We're going to go over specifically six ingredients um, that you absolutely want to try and avoid. Just to let everybody know, I don't know if you're reaching for pens or just glasses, but I do have handouts. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I try, I try and think of everything. Absolutely. So if you take a look, I'm not going to hold it still so you can't read what they are yet. But there's literally uh, four pages. So there's a front and a back to each one. So just about every single thing I have written on these slides is in these notes. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show, as they say. Uh, there also are a lot of pictures. We're going to go through that. Obviously, they're not on the notes. But we're going to cover the six ingredients to absolutely avoid. And when we go over these six ingredients, we're obviously going to tell you what are they. We're going to tell you why you should avoid them, why they're so bad for your health. We're going to explain some of the foods that you're going to find them in. And then most importantly, we're going to talk about their secret identities or their alias names. Because marketing and advertising, it's all really super tricky. So these six ingredients alone, if you combine them together, there's over 55 different names for them that will appear on your food labels. And I didn't even list them all. I just listed the majority of the most common ones. So. This is a food label. Some of you may have seen it, some of you may don't really care about it, but hopefully by the end of today you're going to start to care. A lot of people are familiar with this. I'll be honest with you, I personally don't care a lot about that part of a food label. That's the part where you can be tricky and deceiving. Yes, it's nice to know what things like your sodium intake is. It's nice to know if you're looking to count calories and you need to break down your proteins, your carbs, and your fats and stuff like that. This one's okay, it talks about saturated fats and trans fats, but again, those could be really, really deceiving because even though they say zero grams of certain things, there actually still is those products in there, it's just they manipulate and play with the serving size. And if they can lower it down so that it's less than a half a gram, they could technically say that there's zero in there. So I'm gonna teach you to sort of ignore this and focus over here, because the ingredients is where it's really at. And obviously, that's a lot of ingredients. I know you can't read it, but I'm going to probably read some of these things to you. So if there's more than five or six ingredients, chances are eh, you might want to choose something else. So the number one on the hit list, and this one gets the, the no <laughs> dough. All right. So many people tell me, you know, Dr. Doug, what can I do to improve my health? And my, my first answer always is, well, listen, you really need to start eliminating and cutting out sugar in your diet. They go, oh, no problem. I got that covered. I don't eat that stuff. I say, well, you probably do, you just don't know that you're eating it. Because I don't mean it's just that white stuff that sits on your table or in those sugar packets that you shake and stick in your tea or your coffee. Sugar is in lots of things. Health effects of too much sugar. It will literally cripple your immune system. It causes all sorts of nasty things. But the immune system is one thing that it really starts to eat away at. It increases your LDL and lowers your HDL levels, so those are your quote-unquote your good and your bad cholesterol levels. It can cause things like headaches and migraines, MS, fibromyalgia, hyperactivity issues, um, cancer, gout, arthritis, and all sorts of stuff. We don't have time to go into all the details about what sugar does, but one of our talks is called The Three Worst Foods to Eat and Why. This is number one. And we covered it in about 35 to 40 minutes. We spent a lot of time on sugar. Yes, there's that much to talk about on sugar, all right? But it really goes into great detail. So if you're interested in learning more about the why, go to our website, bcchiropractic.com. Along the top, you'll see Tuesday Talks. Down below that is all these videos that we're doing. We're recording this one today, so you can go back and get a refresher. Plus, all the handouts are on there as well. So if you want to know more about sugar, which you should, Go to that one. But sugar is found in, anyone want to guess? Bam, I even wrote, I, I wrote it as big as I could to fit on the slide. 
It literally is fun in almost everything. So when I say six ingredients to absolutely avoid, that's what I want your mindset to read these labels, but you gotta come to grips with reality as I have that sugar is in so many things, it's literally almost impossible to get away from. But the more natural, healthier sugar alternatives you can use, the better you can eat. Got it? Okay. So the sugar secret identities are, well sugar, that's an easy one. Then you have brown sugar, syrup, malt syrup, and molasses. Honey, cane juice, and evaporated cane juice. I don't care if it says organic or not, it's still sugar. Uh, corn syrup, fructose corn syrup, and perhaps arguably one of the worst, which is high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. Go to the video if you want to know why. Uh, glucose, sucrose, and fructose, lactose, maltose, and galactose. So all these things are listed on your handout. You can kind of go and sort of read your labels at home and see which ones you sort of want to sift through. But that is a, a pretty good list of what different sugars are called in the body. So let's go back to this one. This was fiber one. Most people would probably look at fiber one and be like, that's a pretty good, you know, it's better than fruity pebbles or fruit loops or something like that. So when we take a look at it, yes, it starts, oh, and by the way, if you don't know, when you read ingredient lists, the higher up the, the, higher up the food appears, the more there is of it. So this has mostly some whole, whole grain wheat, corn bran, and wheat bran. But when we start to get down into this line, we start to see, bam, right there is sugar. Can anybody read that or no? Yes. Okay. So right there it says sugar. And then we come over here, and then this says crisp oats. And in parentheses, everything after the parentheses to the end is what the crisp oat is made of. So crisp oats is made of rice, flour, sugar, malt extract, which is now, you know, as a sugar. So there's two sugars and salt and BHT to preserve it, because it's so healthy they gotta preserve that. And then you come down here and you see brown sugar and you see corn syrup, and then you come down here and you see sugar, and you see high fructose corn syrup, and then you see honey and you see brown sugar and you see molasses, and then we see sugar again. Are you getting nauseated again? And then you see malt syrup, and then you see a bunch of other stuff, and there's probably another sugar in there as well, I just don't wanna read it. So that's probably not the best option to have in the morning. Right? Okay. So, well, it's not bad. It's only six grams of sugar. But it's, I mean, everything in there has sugar in it. All the ingredients they put in it has the sugar in it. So it's more important to read that because it gives you a clear answer. We'll revisit this several times because there's a lot of things in this fiber one. All right. So this is ice cream, Perry's ice cream. So Perry's ice cream where are the days when it was just milk and cream and you throw a little bit of sugar in it and voila. Yeah, it doesn't, that doesn't exist a lot. But here you have milk and cream, good. And the second one is corn syrup. And then we have liquid sugar. And then we have a few other products down below. Actually, more than a few other products. It's a really long list. So my, my purpose here today is not to scare you away from eating everything. But it's really to give you some knowledge to say, listen, I like ice cream. I eat ice cream, but I just choose to eat healthier versions of ice cream. Ice cream's not the best food. I'm not saying, hey, this is going to be a really healthy thing for you to eat. But there's much healthier options to eat if you want to eat ice cream. And that's what we're going to talk about a lot. So I like Breyers because Breyers typically does have lots of all natural ingredients. So I couldn't find the vanilla one. This was in Wise. I believe Wegmans has the all natural vanilla, which is pretty much three, possibly four ingredients. So this one basically has milk, strawberries, sugar, cream, whey, and something called tarragon, which basically just gives it a consistency. But the all-natural vanilla pretty much just has milk, cream, sugar, and vanilla bean. That's it. So that, to me, is a great option, and I can add some things to that if I want to flavor it, as opposed to the stuff that you saw on the previous slide. So enjoy your ice cream, just enjoy healthier versions of it. Better sweeteners to use if you have to absolutely sweeten things, whether it's coffee or tea or whatever. Maybe you're cooking with it. Maybe you're baking with it. These are much better options. Dextrose, it's called pure glucose. The details are in that three worst foods to eat and why one. But just trust me, if you see dextrose on there, it's a little bit of a healthier option than just plain old sugar. Stevia is a natural herb. Some people love it, some people don't. I'm not a big fan of it, just the flavor portion of it. But some people find that different brands really make a big difference. So try that out. 
I like xylitol. That's one of the ones that I like using now. It's a naturally occurring alcohol found in different fruits and vegetables. So that to me is a really good is a really good option. And that's present in more and more products these days. Something called pure honey and pure maple syrup. Is a, this is probably the biggest joke. So here's honey. Really? <laughs> it's sugar, because that's the first ingredient, and then honey, and then caramel color. So basically, they probably loaded it with a bunch of sugar, threw in two drops of honey, one drop of caramel color, and called it honey. That's probably what they did. So it looks like honey, but it has absolutely no nutritional benefit like true, actual, bee-made honey does. And there's a lot, of good, a lot of good nutrients you can get from the actual real stuff. So here's that cute little bear that probably everybody has in their, in their cupboards. So they actually happen to have honey as the first ingredients, but they also have high fructose rice syrup. We didn't mention that. That's a little unusual. Usually it's corn syrup. Uh, and then also rice syrup as well. So high fructose rice syrup and then rice syrup too. So that's probably a lot more syrupy than it is honey. Or you could literally buy a product that's honey. That's a great option. I would recommend going to local farmers markets and buying the honey from around the area because that actually can help out with certain sensitivities and allergies because the bees pollinate all of these flowers and everything around here and then they make the honey and you get a very small amount of that in and it can actually over time, it's almost like a, homeo, it's almost like a homeopathic type remedy, you can actually develop uh, less allergies to some of, the, some of the things with regards to pollen if you just start eating a little bit of the real honey but try and make it local. Because if you get it from the bees in California, they don't really have the same flowers as they do around here. So better, plus it supports the local farmers too, so I'd recommend that too. So that's a great option for your sweeteners. <coughs> maple syrup. Yeah, pure maple syrup. Both are Wegmans brands. I went around the supermarkets, by the way, with the cameras. And I, I, I didn't know if I was going to get thrown out if they are going to be like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you taking pictures of all my stuff? But nobody caught me. I was very slick about it. So that's actually maple syrup from the trees. Good nutrients in some of that stuff. Here, Wegmans 2% maple syrup. It starts off with high fructose corn syrup, then you have corn syrup, then you have water, and you finally have maple syrup. And after that, you also have your artificial flavors and colors and caramel color as well. So that's really not a good option because it's pretty much just high fructose corn syrup with just a splash of maple, maple syrup. So you're not going to get any good health benefits from it. Aunt Jemima doesn't even have a drop of maple <laughs> syrup in it. What does Aunt Jemima do? Well, she throws in corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup and water and then a whole bunch of other stuff uh, just to kind of make it look and smell and taste like honey, uh, taste like syrup. So I would tend to venture away from, from uh, Aunt Jemima over there. Okay? Yeah? Where did you find xylitol? <laughs> xylitol you can find in Wegmans. They actually have it in their, uh, I call it the organic section, mm -hmm. but it's right in there and they sell them by the bag full and you can just buy it just like you buy a regular sack of, sack of sugar. Number two on the hit list, artificial sweeteners. Just don't use them. Alright, if you got to sweeten something, eat the real stuff. It's not that great for you, but this is really bad for you. All right? Plus it tastes terrible. So I don't know if, the, if anybody drinks diet sodas or whatever, but probably the first time you tried to drink a diet soda after drinking the real thing, I mean, you, you, you had to force yourself pretty much to try and get used to it, which is, which is ironic because you're forcing yourself to get used to something that's more dangerous than the real stuff to begin with. So artificial sweeteners really aren't a very good, uh, really good option. Why? Because they can cause all these things, lots of stuff. Very similar to the sugar thing, but now we start throwing in things like nausea and vomiting, um, heart palpitations, arrhythmias, uh, all sorts of stuff. And you just, you just want to try and stay away from the artificials as much as possible. They're found in primarily anything that says sugar-free. So I did a talk a few times ago about the three worst foods to eat and why. And one of my patients, I was picking on him in the front corner here. He used to eat ice cream all the time. So then he came to me next week, he goes, I found a sugar-free ice cream. I'm not eating that ice cream anymore. And I said, oh, please. <laughs> Read the label, let me know if it says aspartame or something yeah. like that. He goes back, he says, son of a gun. <laughs> so he, got, he fell into the trap of less sugar, healthier, no, artificial works. So it comes in diet sodas, pudding, fillings, uh, vitamins. Isn't that crazy? Vitamins. Here, take these vitamins to be healthy. By the way, we're going to throw some artificial sweeteners in there. Because you just, you have to have sweetness to take a vitamin. 
Uh, chewing gum is a big one. If you're really chewing on gum, chances are you're probably chomping on aspartame uh, or sorbitol throughout the entire day. Some people chew gum all day long. So that's just like a steady influx of artificial sweetener. Uh, cereals, breakfast, bars, and trail snacks. Artificial sweetener, secret identities. There's not too many here. All right? These are the more common ones. So aspartame, most people know about. Aspartame has over 90 different side effects associated alone. Uh, saccharin is one that's more of your pink sweet and lows that you kind of add to your coffee and your tea. But sucralose is one that's pretty common in the ingredients as well. That's Splenda. Look, tastes like sugar because it's made from sugar. That's their, that's their quote. Yeah, well, hydrochloric acid is made from water. But obviously, I wouldn't consume hydrochloric acid because it's really pretty bad. By the time you go through the chemical process of converting sugar to sucralose, it's a totally different structure, much more dangerous in the body, just like water to acid. Neotame and then these two guys there. Those aren't present too often, but I wanted to throw them on there just to give you an idea because you're going to read ingredients and you're not going to understand a lot of what those words are. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Here's a syrup again. Mrs. Buttersworth. Remember that? Mrs. Buttersworth? Come, come across the come my table. So here's a sugar-free version of it. So it's water and sorbitol, and then the rest of it contains 2% or less. So <laughs> that's water and artificial sweetener. This entire bottle is water and artificial sweetener. And then they add the natural artificial flavors. Actually, a little bit lower, they do corn syrup and molasses. And then they say that the sugar content the alcohol sugar is eight. So how they could say it's sugar free, I don't totally understand that one. How they can get away with that. Uh, but obviously, being more savvy now, you're not going to worry about what it says there or over here. You're going to look in there and you're going to notice that there's a lot of things that's not listed on that other label. This is actually, uh, this is oatmeal. I had to zoom in, otherwise you'd never be able to read it. But there are some artificial sweeteners, sucralose, in, in oatmeal. I don't know why you have to soil oatmeal. Just make oatmeal and just add some honey and throw some other things that you like to eat as well. But there's a whole bunch of things in that oatmeal that absolutely don't need to belong there. Typically they're going to be your instant oatmeals that you shake and you just add water to and they have all that seasoning packet in there which is why they have to preserve it and do all this stuff to it to make it taste better. So just, it doesn't take much longer to boil up some oatmeal and just add some more natural ingredients. These are Flintstone vitamins. Dextrose, which is a sugar. Sugar, which is a sugar. Sorbitol, which is a sugar. Uh, and then there's a couple other things that we're going to talk about a little bit down there. And then we also have aspartame as well. So not only do they use the artificial sweeteners, but they use the regular and the uh, not so good sugars as well. You know, vitamin kids. For kids, exactly. We'll get into a little bit more about the whole kid thing. So, number three on the, tra on, the, on the hit list is trans fats. What on earth is a trans fat? Three worst foods to eat and why. Number two is a trans fat. You want to know all the details? Go there, but I'll give you the quick synopsis. Every single, every single cell in your body, and you have trillions and trillions and trillions of cells. There are these tiny little balls, circular things. And there's two layers of fat that surround every single cell. It's called the cell membrane. It's also called the lipid bilayer, two layers of fat. Well, every cell needs good, healthy fats to create nice, good membranes to allow nutrients to come in and out and in order for those cells to work right. So if it's a heart cell, do you want it to work well? Yeah. A lung cell? Yeah. How about a skin cell, an eyeball cell, hearing cells? I don't care, muscles, toes, fingernails, stomach. You want these cells to be working like they're supposed to. Trans fats are totally abnormal. They're man-made. They have no business being in your body because they're not even found in nature. So what they do is they take this beautiful round cell and they distort the cell and they don't quite fit well so there's holes and gaps in it and they loop, leak nutrients that they should keep and they allow things that come in that shouldn't be in there in the first place. So it's really not going to work very well. So if you have a trans fat ridden heart, you're probably going to have heart disease. Trans fat ridden liver, you're going to have some issues there. Trans fat ridden pancreas, diabetes, and so forth and so on. So you want to try and stay away from the trans fats. Why? I'm just going to fly through that. You could just read it. 
the reason why it can affect all these things is because cells make up every single part of your body. And if they don't work well, the body doesn't work well. That's why you can have cardiovascular issues, cancer, diabetes, uh, obesity, infertility, arthritis, all sorts of stuff. Just stay away from it. Trans fats are found in lots of things, but a lot of these uh, doughs and, and bread type materials. So you have breads, taco shells, crackers, peanut butter is a big one. Uh, pizza, it's in dough, uh, pies, cakes, and cookies, not just the snacks and the desserts. So some of the secret identities, this is an easy one. There's only three. Yay! Partially hydrogenated, anything that says hydrogenated, and if there's listed for shortening, shortening is another one as well. Okay? Can you crack that window, that door a little bit? I think it's getting a little warm here. So those are the ones you're going to want to look for with regards to trans fats. So here's peanut butter. Kids. How many parents feed this to their kids? Almost on a daily basis, to be honest, from what I hear from some parents, but at least three or four times a week, I'm pretty much hearing lots of parents are giving their kids peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So here's good old Skippy. Reduced fat. Got to be healthy. Roasted peanuts, corn syrup solids, sugar are the first three ingredients. That's a lot. Uh, Peter Pan's got to be better, after all, he's in Neverland. So, this has roasted peanuts, sugar, and partially hydrogenated vegetables. Oh, we're talking about the vegetable oils. So here, the, the next one is hydrogenated vegetable oil as well. So that's got the sugars, and it's got the trans fats. This guy, all he's got is peanuts, sugar, and trans fats, nothing else besides that. So, why not go to Wegmans and pick up an organic peanut butter? I know what you're thinking. I've tried, you know, ground up peanuts, and they taste terrible. That one's a really good one. I've been giving this one to my kids for years, and I really like it. I haven't tried a Skippy or a, or a Peter Pan or anyone like that in a while, but I do remember it was very grainy, very gritty when I had it. This is much more creamy and smooth. That's, Plus, a, very, that's a very good peanut butter, the organic one. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. That. I actually get the nutty one as well. I like to have a little crunch in mine. But this is basically organic peanuts, some palm oil, some sugar. Yes, it's in there, and sea salt but it doesn't have the trans fats and it doesn't have any of the artificial sweeteners or anything like that. So you can still have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just eat it with a healthier option versus the non-healthy option. Tacos! I like tacos. If you want, you can go the El Paso route and get partially hydrogenated soybean oils and corn syrup solids, or you could enjoy a burrito with a Chi Chi's label, and you don't have any of that. There's no trans fats in it, there's no sugars in that, there's none of that other garbage that's in there. So you can still have a burrito. I personally would have it with an organic chicken for like a chicken fajita, and spice it up myself as opposed to using the prepackaged spices. Because if you use the prepackaged spices, the non-organic chickens, and you go with this guy, you're probably hitting almost all six ingredients that you want to avoid. But if you go the more natural route, you can avoid almost all of them. And it tastes better, and it's healthier for you. Have a sandwich. So, here and there they have the partially hydrogenated soybean oils, and they also have something called dough conditioners. We'll go over that one a little bit later. It's my little plant to see, a little foreshadowing. So, you know, it's even in the breads. So why not go with something that I really like, Heidelberg. I don't know if anybody eats this or not, but you can find them in Wise, you can find them in Healthy, a couple different options out there. Give your bread the Charmin squeeze test. Remember that from years ago? Don't squeeze the Charmin, the guy comes running out, get off my toilet paper. So the Charmin should be really soft and squishy. Your breads, you don't want to be soft and squishy. You know, you can take a piece of Wonder Bread. Remember that? You can squeeze it up into a ball, stick it out on the counter, it turns into a rock hard ball within a day or two. You can use it for foosball. <laughs> But if you want to eat it, not a good idea because it's totally depleted of nutrients and there's all sorts of preservatives, which is why it doesn't mold even after three months of sitting on your counter. If the bugs don't eat it, don't eat it. <laughs> so Heidelberg has a lot of great things in it. This one happens to be hardy flaxseed. So what is it? It's unbleached flour, whole wheat flour, barley flour, water, flaxseed, salt, and yeast. No dough conditioner. No trans fats. No sugar is really added to that. So really nice option. Put your peanut butter on that as opposed to the Wonder Bread. Go to your local farmer's market and pick up their, pre their, their jellies that they make at home. They're going to use some sugar in that. You're not going to avoid the sugar thing. But you can at least have 
five out of the six eliminated as opposed to eating all of them. How about a salad? Well, some people think a salad is iceberg lettuce. That's really kind of nutritionally depleted. But some of you, you got to choke that salad down because you just don't like the flavor. So then you add things like croutons, which are loaded with trans fats, and then you add things like bacon bits because it's got to have some flavor to it. And you got to add all these other things to it. And you say, you know what? That's a salad. It, it, you know, it's nice and healthy because I'm supposed to eat more salads. But unfortunately, this guy has partially hydrogenated soybean oil and high fructose corn syrup as well. It's a creamy dressing. Did anybody have any of that? The dip? I poisoned you all. You feel a little nauseous? No. Good, because I'm just kidding. I use something called Marie's. It's found in Wegmans. Can you tell I like Wegmans? They just happen to have really good products these days. So Marie's doesn't have any of that stuff. One gram of sugar, a little bit of sugar in there. But it's a much better option. So you still can have some creamy dressings if you'd like. Just choose a different brand. Um, there's a ton of these, a uh, ton of examples. Most of your salad dressings are pretty much garbage. Balsamic vinegar and oil is really the best, and you can add things like, I like to crush up a little bit of garlic, um, one to one ratio of balsamic vinegar to oil, and then I also throw in about a tablespoon of uh, Dijon mustard and mix that up. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. So you can certainly make your own dressings, but that's a really good option. Number four on the hit list, MSG, monosodium glutamate. I think it dropped like five degrees. That was a good idea. Mm -hmm. So most people really don't know what MSG is, but at least they know that they shouldn't have it. So it's not a meat tenderizer. It's not a preservator. Really, it's more in the lines of a, of a flavor enhancer. And the way it works is it has these certain um, neurotransmitters is what the, the technical term, but pretty much it latches onto your tongue and it tricks your body into thinking that you're eating a good healthy protein. It's, it's a brilliant product, but the problem is, is you could chop up some paper and sprinkle some MSG on it and eat confetti and your body's going to think it's actually eating a good product and it's tasty, but you had no idea. Close your eyes, close, you can close your eyes and try it. It's made from sugar. It's made from all sorts of weird stuff. Please. Yeah. Sure. So, it's not a very good option. Why? What's the problem? Well, it's a neurotoxin. So basically, we talked about this neurotransmitter thing. So this neurotransmitter actually simulates a lot of different systems in your body. It can, oh, I just went past it. It can affect brain and nervous system because it latches on and it, it sends information up to your brain saying, this is what's going on when in actuality it's not. It can affect your eyes and ears, and it can affect your pancreas. So, whenever anybody hears MSG, what, are they, what restaurant do you typically type, tend to think of? Chinese. Chinese. I don't think anybody misses a beat on that one. So, what's the biggest joke with regards to eating at a Chinese buffet? You eat too much. You eat too much. You stuff your. You, know, you go five times. Have you ever had five plates at home? You know, I mean, you know, your stomach's about the size of your fist. You picture four or five plates jammed into that stomach there. I don't know how we do it. But what happens an hour after you eat at a Chinese restaurant? You're hungry again. Why? Because the products are so nutritionally deficient and empty and gone. And then once they pull all that stuff, the good stuff, out, they got to now throw in some MSG to make it taste better, throw in some color to make it look appealing, and all of a sudden you have this nutrient empty food that you just shoved into your body. But the MSG, one second, the MSG actually tricks your brain into thinking, wow, all these great nutrients are coming in. So it sends a message to the pancreas, hope I didn't break the TV, sends a message to the pancreas and says, hey guys, there's a ton of food coming down here. Start launching off some insulin because we're going to have to start storing all this glucose that you're going to get. So then the, the insulin starts floating around your body. It starts latching itself to all the glucose. And it pulls everything, not everything, but a lot of it out of your bloodstream. And then after about an hour, the brain's looking around. It's going, where the heck is all the glucose? Because it needs it to run. So then the body sends a message back up to the brain. It says, hey, listen, we need some glucose down here. Can you start eating again? Tell your brain that it's hungry. So on goes your switch, and now you're hungry again an hour later because of MSG. Pretty wild. Do they still use that? I thought they didn't use that anymore. I don't know how they can get around saying they don't, but they do. Yeah. Oh, I know how. I know how. Because it's, it's listed as different ingredients. Oh. 
So health effects of MSG, numbness, tingling, and burning sensations. Why? Because it affects the nervous system. <laughs> Facial pressure, tightness, and eye damage. Why? It affects the vision, the eyes. Chest pain, headaches, disorientation, weakness, cardiac arrhythmias, and yes, even death. And lots of other stuff. Not a good product to have. So what is it found in? Soups, soups, mixes, broths, crackers, chips, dips, salad dressings, rotisserie chickens, not all of them, you gotta read your labels. Uh, sausage, ramen noodles, frozen dinners, flavor additives, and even vaccines. Your flu shots, your childhood vaccines, it's in that. Secret identities, there's a lot of them. MSG, monosodium glutamate. But you also have monopotassium, glutamic acid, glutamate, gelatin, calcium caseinate, sodium caseinate, hydrolyzed protein, textured protein, yeast extract, yeast food, yeast nutrient, barley malt, barley malt rather, malt extract, malt flavoring, soy protein, and soy protein isolates actually in quite a few products. So keep an eye out for that one. Yeah. Think, hey, it's protein. And I thought all it was was something they sprayed on the salad bar. Yeah. No. I can't believe it. It's in so many products. Wow. If you want some vegetable dip, sure. If you want monosodium glutamate, uh -huh. right there on the label, yeah. along with some other stuff. Where's that fiber one again? Just can't get away from this guy. So here you have, uh, uh, sure, I'll just give it the real names. Sugar, oats, oats. Grain, sugar, sugar, salt, preservative, sugar, sugar, <laughs> grains, sugar, sugar, uh, sugar, 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 salt, wheat bits. What's that? Well, it's 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 whole grain, wheat corn, corn flour, sugar, salt, trisodium phosphate, soda, color, malt, barley extract. We know what that is now, right? MSG. Good. Sugar, modified cornstarch, sugar, tripotassium, color added, natural, artificial flavor, sucralose, which is an artificial flavoring, uh, artificial sweetener. Probably not a good option to eat that thing in the morning. But most people would probably think it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Whew. You guys doing all right? <laughs> probably the biggest crime of all, infant formula. Let's read the infant formula. Ingredients, 42.6%, what's that say? 14.7. Soy. Soy. Can you read the rest? No. no. Soy protein isolate. Yeah. MSG, second ingredient in infant formula. Not all of them. Not all of them. But you've got to read your labels. High oleic safflower oil, and then 10%. Sugar in the form of sucrose. So out of your first four ingredients, you have sugar, MSG, and sugar. And this is what we give this precious little thing. Why? Do you honestly have to, I mean, do you need to introduce all these sweetness and sugars to these kids when they're days old? Well, my kid does it. My, my baby you know, quick gets breast milk for, for, I mean, that's obviously the best. But, you know. Have you ever tasted the formula, though? No. It is nasty. I'm sure. I don't know. I'm sure it is. Baby would want to yeah. taste it. Yeah. Yeah. If it's going to taste nasty, nasty, make it taste healthy. Mm -hmm. Healthy is not nasty, by the way. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but not every mother can breastfeed like right. my daughter. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Couldn't breastfeed because her baby kept getting jaundice from mm -hmm. her body. Yeah. 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 Ye
So it could be uh, it could be a smell, it could be an extraction, it could be a distillate, it could be a fruit, it could be a vegetable, it could be an animal product, it could be part of an animal, it could be a root, it could be whatever, plant material, fermentation, eggs. That's technically considered natural. And they're right. So carmine is found in yogurts and beverages to give them a nice ruby red color. So anything that you see is kind of red, chances are it's got some carmine. Any idea what it is? <laughs> it's crushed bugs. It's the coccinio bug. So what does the coccinio bug look like? It looks like that. And then they roll it and squeeze it and it looks like that. And they add it to that. Oh, oh no, not my chobani! Hey, it's only natural ingredients. They're not lying to you. It's a little deceptive. Is it bad? Oh my god. Well, not all bugs are bad bugs. Where did they catch that bug? That's the thing. You know where those hands have been? You know where that bug's been? So here's cysteine. It's used as a dough conditioner. Remember I said the dough conditioner gives some textures to doughs and stuff like that. So what is that? Well, it's actually made from human hair and duck feathers. Ooh. Did you ever go to a restaurant and find a hair? Get it out of here! Send it back! That's Fiber. disgusting. Fiber. Me, I'm pretty much, I'll just throw it out. You know, it feels like a ball of hair. Okay, I'm not going to send that back. But that doesn't yeah. disturb me too much. But, you know, this is used in some of these products to condition the dough. Make it more pleasing to the palate somehow. Shellac. You just got to know that's not going to be I good. work in the hair industry and yeah. OSHA, OSHA, which I'm, I, most business owners is, are aware, you know, it's the federal government. Hair is the most dangerous thing. It causes so many diseases, and we get fined up the yin-yang for hair anywhere in the salon. Like if they came in and saw it in the drawers or... You know, your your towels aren't covered or something like that. That's how dangerous hair is. You should have the food manufacturers come into the salons and clean it out. <laughs> they could recycle. Apparently, they're getting it from somewhere, so maybe they're stealing our bags. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> shellac is the shiny glaze you see on donuts and candies and stuff like that. So where does shellac come from? It comes from the fe it's res it's resinous secretions of the female lac bug. So that's what it looks like, a cute little thing. It eventually looks like that, and then they coat things like Skittles and candies, and probably on candy canes too, I, I, I don't know, but anything pretty much shiny uh, is, is what they're pretty much using that for. And then we have castoreum. Is it, don't say it if you have, but has anybody heard of castoreum? <laughs> so you got to see the video to believe this one. So I would encourage all of you to check out 60 Minutes. Um, go to YouTube, type in 60 Minutes Tweaking Tastes, and it's about a 14 minute video. And the food manufacturers, you know, they're proud. They're proud to say, you know what, this is so cool. We can, we can extract these flavors out of this thing and that thing and the other thing and create, you know, all these different flavors that totally fools your, your brain, just like the MSG fools it. And it looks and smells and tastes just like the real thing when it's really far from it. So this is actually from the doctors. You've definitely uncovered some surprising ingredients in your food on this program, but what is behind natural raspberry flavoring? It may top them all. It's called castoreum. What is it? What is castoreum? Well, it's been used for 80 years to sweeten your food and even your perfume. You know where it comes from? <laughs> it comes from beaver anal glands. Oh. <laughs> 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 I want to know who's the first one to try that. How, how did we find out that it's my favorite? Yeah, really? You've seen a lap look at the zebra anal glands? Yeah, right. Mm, that's, that tastes like raspberry. How many other animals did they have to go through before they found that it was a beaver? Talking about what we eat, I mean, technically, Travis. Beaver is all natural. So, uh, you know what? And, and in fairness, Dr. Orton, it is. In uh, fairness, Doc, you are absolutely right. And Doc probably works for the Food and Drug So beaver animals. 
So that's a beaver anal gland. And that's a product you might be eating it. So you might want to think twice about the raspberry flavored items you're consuming. Raspberry yogurt. Raspberry pastries. Raspberry, I don't know, lollipops. Whatever. So read your ingredient label. If it says natural flavors, you're going to have to sort of wonder where it came from. Now, they say, I haven't tried it myself, but they say you can call the food manufacturer and say, and Mylon, I'm sure you'll do this, what was, <laughs> what was, what did you use for the natural ingredient? I would love to hear some feedback if you want to take on that challenge. I would love to hear them say, you know, it's castoreum or whatever. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. But you can find out. You just got to make the effort to call and find out. I would just assume stay away from anything that says natural. And do you think artificial flavors is any better? It's not going to be a, it's not going to be an anal gland at least. We know that because that's not natural. But probably it's like an artificial sweetener where it's really not going to be that good for you. Can I ask? Uh, is it labeled castoreum on the? No. Raspberries? It's labeled it's natural, natural food. Yeah. Natural flavoring okay. is what it's labeled for that. So, wow. so food coloring. Am I hungry? Food coloring. So why do we use food coloring? <clears throat> well, basically, you want to take a food that would otherwise be an off-colored mess and make it look appealing. So, you know, if you strip all the, the color and, and it just like looks like this pile of mush, it, no one's going to want to eat it. So you need to add all sorts of crazy looking colors, and that's why all these kids' products, the Slurpees or these fluorescent blues and reds and greens, and the Flintstone and the vitamins are all fluorescent looking, and the Fruit Loops and, and all those things. You know, you don't find those colors out there in nature. You can't get that from Castoreum or uh, Lac Bugs and stuff like that. So that's some artificial type coloring stuff. Health effects of food coloring can include tumors or cancer of the kidney, the brain, the bladder, um, thyroid, and those are just the ones that they've gone through research and done. Who knows how many other stuff they've caused? Uh, hypersensitivities and allergies, and also hyperactivities with regards to mostly kids because they're a bit more sensitive. Plus, they're being bombarded with it uh, throughout the day, and people just don't know it. Uh, and behavioral effects in kids as well. So what are some of the secret identities? These are pretty simple. If there's a color with a number, it's a food coloring. Blue number one, two, citrus red, two, green three, red three, red 40, yellow five, and six. What happened to yellow one, two, three, and four? Great question. It was originally approved and then it was banned, taken off the shelf. Why do you think? Because it was too good for you? No, because it was known to cause all sorts of nasty side effects, kind of like the ones that these are starting to cause now. So in 10 years from now, I don't know, maybe we'll have yellow seven and eight and five and six will be gone because we finally realized that it's really dangerous for you. So just avoid it. Back then, you didn't yeah. mention the lake ones. All the, the new generation, the lake. The lake ones? Yeah, all the lake I haven't gotten into it. They're even more toxic. I, I was told to totally stay away from them. So here's, you know, what a lot of parents give their, their kids for breakfast. A lot of parents eat it probably too. <laughs> so what's the first ingredient? Wow. Then you got corn flour with that stuff, and or at least there's some other stuff in here. But you got your partially hydrogenated oils your salt, your red 40, natural flavor. You know there's a raspberry flavor in there somewhere, yeah. the red one. Who knows what the other ones are? Blue two, yellow six, blue one, and BHT for fresh. I don't even know what BHT is. I should look into that. But you know, they want to keep all those fake ingredients nice and fresh, so they taste good. And then they throw a couple of vitamins and minerals because they want to make it sound like it's healthy for you. It's a good source of fiber. Okay. Here, kids, have some vitamins, the Flintstones. So here's the Flintstone vitamins. We already read some at the beginning where it talked about the sugar, the sugar, the sorbitol, the, artificial, the natural and artificial flavors. You know there's raspberry in that one. Aspartame, and then we got all the food colorings in there as well. The only thing it doesn't have is MSG, I don't think. It may be in there. I just overlooked it. Oh, yeah, gelatin, MSG. You got some MSG in there too. There you go, all six. Here's a healthy vitamin. Here, kids, have some ice cream. 
black. What's that? Raspberry. What's that? Natural flavor. <laughs> Woo! That gives you a visual. You know, the doctor did the, you know, the, the beaver lick. Now you think of the ice cream cone? Yeah, gives you a new, a new appreciation. But anyways, this is water and corn syrup and sugar. Yeah, that's a good one. The black raspberry puree, puree is made of corn syrup, raspberry, high fructose corn syrup, sugar, water, natural flavor, red number 40, and blue number 1. You probably want to stay away from that one as well. By Breyers. When did our food get so... It's like a desensitization. Actually, 70s was the, the decade, and uh, President Nixon was the one that kind of started this stuff. He, he wasn't the one that thought of it, but he's the one that started it in motion. And it all started really in the 70s. And there's been a lot of documentation and study about that. And, but that's, we went through, if most of us are older in here, there was a food shortage around the world. And they were trying to come up with ideas of how they could make things on our, our cupboards last yeah. for four right. years yeah. rather than what at Grandma's house yeah. would last for two months, yeah. you know? So that's the answer to yeah. that question. It's a desensitization over time as well. Mm -hmm. Take television, for example. Yeah. What are we seeing today versus five years ago, 10 years ago, and 20 years ago? 20 years ago, you wouldn't see 95% of what you see on TV today. But year after year, you allow a little bit, and then you get used to it, and you allow a little more, you get used to it, you allow a little bit more, you get used to it. Same stuff with this garbage. It just happens over time. Fake, fake. Fake, fake. So why use it all? So when your nutrients are processed, not only do they pull out all the valuable nutrients, uh, but you also lose a lot of the, uh, everything in there. Uh, the texture, the natural variation, the flavors, all that. So after processing, what's left behind is just this bland, uninteresting pseudo food. So you gotta add a bunch of stuff to it. You need to flavor it, you need to color it, you need to preserve it, because no one's gonna wanna eat that pile of confetti, so you need to make it look attractive and, and taste good. The only problem is it's a totally fake food. There's nothing real behind it. We're, probably, we're way overfed and undernourished. We're actually malnourished as a, as a nation, as a whole, but we're totally overfed. Our obesity rates are going through the roof. So at this point, well, I just said it. They have to add all that stuff, which is why it becomes loaded with all the artificial flavors and colorings. So what can I eat? Hey, these are real. You. These are real pictures from this weekend. I didn't, you know, pick and choose like the last three months. This is what me and my family eat uh, over the weekend. So what we do? We make veggie omelets with onions, tomatoes, avocados. We take a slice of raisin sunflower bread, we drizzle it with olive oil and sprinkle some cinnamon on there. Cinnamon on there. Mm -hmm. Real organic cinnamon, Heidelberg bread that doesn't have all the artificial stuff. We use free range uh, chickens. Uh, I buy it from a woman called Linda. On Sundays between 10 and 12, we go to Atenango, Atenango Park in an open parking lot, nobody's looking, and we buy the eggs. I'm just kidding about that one. I actually really do go to Otsonango Park, and if anybody wants her number, she's, you know, she comes out, she delivers on. Totally my number. Yeah, and they're actually a lot less expensive than your organic ones that you buy in these yeah, stores. Totally. So that's what we have as a typical breakfast, and yes, my kids eat it too. Organic steel-cut oats with shredded coconuts and blueberries. You want to sweeten it a little bit? Drizzle it with some real honey. That would be completely fine. And yes, Kids love this stuff. This is one of their favorite ones. They probably have this three times a week at least, three or four times a week for breakfast. Organic whole food shakes with a half a banana, pineapple, blackberries, and strawberries. I don't have time to, you know, scramble up an egg and, and cook it. That's at least four and a half minutes out of my day in the morning. You gotta wait for the toaster to toast it for another minute and a half. You know, I just don't have that time. Okay. Throw in some of this stuff, in under a minute and a half, you can have a really great whole food shake and take it with you. I wouldn't recommend having this for every day, but if you really truly press for time, it's a great natural option as opposed to pouring a bowl of Fruit Loops and sitting down and still taking five or six minutes to eat that, you can take that and go. So the first three we just showed you, a crustless quiche, they're fantastic. If you start using the crust in there, that's when you start getting some of the trans fats and the MSGs and stuff like that. So 
We make crustless quiche. And basically, you just take four eggs, you take some cottage cheese, you take some sour cream, you take a, a quarter cup of uh, a good uh, flour base, and you add whatever you want to it. You want to flavor it a little bit, you want to throw some, some cheese and some broccoli in there, you want to throw some avocados and spinach and whatever. You, know, you can add all that stuff to it. Try with feta cheeses and goat cheeses. That's a, that's a lot of fantastic things you can do. We make it on Saturdays or Sundays, and we make one or two quiches, and they heat up great. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you can still have quiche two or three times a week. And you've already pre-made it one time. So what, what can we eat for lunch and dinner at my house? This is a brand new one. We tried this, and it is awesome. It's, it's, I call it the adult version of the grilled cheese, but my kids tried it too. They loved it. And we said, no, we don't want you to eat this one. You eat your regular ones. Leave this one for us. But it's an herb goat cheese and a spinach and a, and a mozzarella cheese. And you spread a pesto, a pesto sauce on one side of the bread. You add baby spinach and avocado. And this is all on the hearty flaxseed bread from the Heidelberg. That is incredibly tasty. And after just the sandwich without a side, I was actually quite full from that. Because it's so nutrient dense that it really tells your brain, hey, that was enough. And that's a really good option. Do you have a cookbook here? <laughs> Watch the video. It's going to be online. Cilantro and lime organic chicken thighs over brown rice with sugar snap peas and cucumber salad. We make the cucumber salad with apple cider vinegar. Uh, we also had a salad as well. So we, we were just in a really green mood for, for some reason that particular night. Uh, this doesn't take long to make. Make your While, while you make your... Uh, let me just tell you to make a quiche. Why you throw a quiche in the oven? How, how hard is it to cook rice? It takes a while. It takes about an hour. But just throw a few cups of water in there, add a cup of brown rice, and it'll fluff up, and you can stick it in a big old container, throw it in your fridge, and keep it for two weeks. Yeah. And throughout the week, just scoop, boom, scoop, boom. So I came home on, I think this was actually Thursday night, Friday, from working a long day. I came home, and I went outside, and I, I cooked up the, the chicken thighs. It took me about 12 minutes. While I'm outside, Sean and my wife just heated up some of the rice. We like our sugar snap peas raw, so we just throw them on there. And she chopped up some of the cucumbers and, and added some apple cider vinegar. And under 12 minutes, we had that meal for a family of four. 12 minutes. You know, if you cook a frozen food entree, or you, you, you cook any of these other ones, like, like a box of macaroni and cheese or something, you're waiting 10 to 15 minutes for those things too. Get something more natural. Broiled, wild caught. Get wild caught, not farm raised. Paddock, I season it with salt, pepper, garlic, paprika, lemon, and a little bit of white wine. Um, I wouldn't buy the cooking white wine. I taste it, it tastes no. terrible. Yes. So if you're not going to drink it as a wine, why would you really cook with it? So you want to add flavor to it. So we really like some of the Finger Lake wines. I like uh, Lucas, uh, the Lucas Vineyards ones. We use Butterfly. That's something that I like. It's nice and sweet. So we use that. We serve it with sweet potatoes and broccoli. By the way, when you're on Sunday, when you're cooking your meals, how long does it take? You know how long it takes for us to cook sweet potatoes? Yeah, I do. 18 minutes in the microwave. Oh, well, why don't you use microwave? But we're using an hour for that. So this is what I do. All right, time. You ready? Go. One, two, three, four sweet potatoes. Walk away. An hour later, you have sweet potatoes. How much time did that take me to prep for the sweet potatoes? Mm -hmm. No, eight seconds. So the beeper goes off because I don't remember. So then after an hour, I take it off, I stick it on the stove, I walk away. How long did that take? Okay, maybe three seconds. And then after about two or three hours when they finally cool down, you can just literally peel the skin right off, throw it into a, a little bowl, mix it in with a little bit of uh, cinnamon and some melted butter, and within about two minutes, you have yourself sweet potatoes that can last for several minutes. Don't tell me you don't have the time, because it just takes very little time to do, um, and the new, and nutrition benefits are huge. You cleaned your oven. I have a self-cleaning oven. <laughs> so, and yes, kids eat this stuff. It just depends on whether you introduce it to them properly or not. You're welcome. He's in his... He's actually in his jammies. He was, he was excited. He wanted to watch a movie that night. So he's like, all right, go get your jammies on. You can have some dinner and then go. 
Uh, teriyaki marinated porterhouse with balsamic mm. glazed Brussels sprouts and tropical bean salad, a recipe my, my wife came up with. It's simple. Black beans, red peppers, onions, corn, and a whole bunch of limes just squeezed in there. And then I also forgot to add garlic to that, just fresh crushed garlic. And that's, I mean, that's a great thing to eat there. amazing. I made that last night. I went home and, and well, I'm out there. It was a beautiful day, suffering, you know, out there uh, cooking that. We already had that prepared, and all she had to do was just stick that in the oven with the, with the you know, just mix it up in a little bit of balsamic vinegar with some salt and some pepper, and throw it in the oven, it bakes, and that's it. Are Brussels sprouts in that? They're not in there. They're not in there. No, some, they're not. I actually listed some of them, but I didn't list all the ones we ate. So here are some different options. You can do some salads with different toppings like chicken, shrimp, etc. Brown rice. It's got a lot of fiber in it, so it can really help clean out that, that digestive tract for you. Butternut, it's one of my favorites. Butternut squash, red onion, and baby spinach. Just lightly saute it. I actually like to saute it with a little bit of toast sesame oil. It adds a little bit of nuttiness and a little bit of a different flavor to it. It's really tasty. Grilled chicken over wild rice with steamed sugar snap. I like raw. Rice and beans, very simple, the tropical bean salad. Try with different fish, tilapia, salmon, um, haddock, rainbow trout. Really go for the wild caught, not the farm raised. Farm raised, they could genetically modify and alter. You don't know what you're getting when you start messing around with this. <laughs> My favorite, goat cheese stuffed organic chicken thighs with the skin on, roasted beets, and sweet potatoes. Oh, I love that. Just hack up, hack up those those beets uh, into little, they look like french fries. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil on there with some salt, pepper, and I use a little bit of dill. Uh, shake it around, throw it in the oven, come back 30 minutes later, and that's it. Just so you can barely dent it with a fork when you, when you stick it in. It has a little bit of crunch, but a ton of flavor. Otherwise, beets are very bland on their own. They're just sort of, they're like a processed food, only nutritious. So you just want to add some natural flavors to them. Uh, and then organic chicken fajitas and beef tacos with the right things. So closing thoughts. Listen, you gotta start slowly. You know, I don't know, if you try and go home and make the things that we made over the weekend, you're probably gonna be like, how the heck is this guy doing? You know, that took us years to get to the point where we're at now. So start slowly. I would recommend start eliminating one item at a time. It'd be great if you eliminated all six as best you can. But if you had to, this is the order I would do it in. Or try and do it in. I would really get rid of those trans fats because they're in so many things. And there's so many products you can get that don't have them in it. And you can still eat the same food. So the goal isn't to make you eat everything like I do. The goal is to take the foods that you like and eat healthier versions of those foods. And then start introducing some healthier foods, maybe like some of the things we kind of saw. Introduce slowly a variety of fruits and vegetables. I would start with those. Okay, you might like apples and oranges and, and things like that, but Wegmans has this thing called a unique fruit. Ever ever tried it? Ever seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. It's ugly. You know, you look at it, you're like, it looks like a shriveled up, uh, uh, what do you call it, grapefruit. You know, very deceiving. It's like marketing. It's very deceiving. But you cut it open, and it's, it's actually, uh, it's very similar to an orange, but it's got a very different taste to it, but just as sweet and really tasty. So you can try different things. And what so is that called? It's called Unique, U-N-I-Q-U-E. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, I mean, just walk around, they, they have, you know, they have one called Ugly Fruit. I haven't tried yes, that one yet. Really, yeah. But they have all sorts of star ones with like pointy mm -hmm. things. It looks like it came out of the, the sea. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've never tried it. They have these tiny little ones. I can't, I can't remember what they are, but they're little bite-sized popper things. They're like kiwis. They're like little kiwi things. You don't have to peel them. You just shove them right in there. Mm -hmm. So every time you go shopping at Wegmans, maybe just pick up one unique fruit. You might eat it and say, I'm never going to buy that again. But at least you tried it. And then try another one. And then try another one. So just try some things a little bit more and more. Uh, An experiment with different seafood and lean meats. You don't like a fishy salmon? Great. Try a tilapia, a white fish, or a haddock. It's all in the way you flavor it. If you just eat fish without any flavor, it's OK. But there's really not a lot of mm to it. So it's just play around with your spices. And allow yourself to cheat. I don't know, I pick Wednesdays and Sundays. Whatever. Pick three days a week if you want to start. But say, I'm going to eat really good for Monday and Tuesday, and Wednesday I'm going to treat myself to, I don't know, whatever. Pizza with the dough conditioner. 
<laughs> or or whatever. You know, I mean, it could be, it could be ice cream. It could be a bowl of fruity pebbles. I wouldn't recommend it, but allow yourself to cheat with some of those things that you don't tell anybody else about that you sort of eat on your own when no one's looking. All right, allow yourself that opportunity to have that because if you don't, you're probably going to fail, and I don't want you to fail. It's not all or none here. Little steps. Um. And that's it. Any questions? Oh. Woo! <laughs> Wonderful <laughs> presentation. Yeah, we did it. Thank you.